Divine Truth Assistance Group Group Assistance Sessions – Putting Principles of Divine Truth into Action This recording is from the Developing My Will to Love Group and is part of the Education and Love series. In the How I Feel About Love presentation, Jesus introduces five basic questions to ask ourselves, examines why we lie to ourselves, and details a series of truths about God and love that we must be willing to face if we are ever going to learn about and grow in love. Recorded on the 20th of February 2016 in New Seville, Queensland, Australia. All right, what we want to do now is ask you this question. How do you feel about love? How, and, and let's ask it of ourselves. How do I feel about love? Can I put it bluntly to you that unless you answer that question and you answer it honestly, you really are not going to have a foundation to learn anything about love anyway. Because unless you can see that, that your definition of love is very, very similar to the world's definition around you, you're not going to ever receive a definition of love that's completely different. So, so answering this question is very, very important. Now, what are the impediments to answering this question? Well, the first, first impediment is arrogance. All right. So let's just write that down. And when I say arrogance, what I'm talking about is the arrogant feeling that you already know what love is. If you already knew what love was, then you wouldn't have pain. If you already knew what love was, you would already be at one with God. If you already knew what love was, you would already have perfect relationship. If you already knew what love was, you'd, you'd already have a lot of things sorted out in your life and you'd have a perfectly happy life. You would also have a perfectly happy body. Your body would be perfectly content. It, it, it would not be you know, large or any of those kind of things either. It, it would all, everything in your life would be perfect, would it not, if you already knew about love. So, so all of these things tell you don't, don't already know about love, but if you arrogantly believe you do already know about love when you don't, then that's going to be a problem. How, how can you learn anything more if you're going to keep hold of this arrogance? So it's a big problem, isn't it? So the question is, am I going to let go of my arrogance? This, this concept that I have that I already know. Am I going to let go of it? Quite often in conversations with you, I, I hear you say to me things like, oh yeah, I know that. <laughs> I'm going, no, you don't know that. If you knew that, you, your whole life would be completely different if you knew that. You only think you know it. And this is a different, this is a problem with knowing something in your head and actually knowing the truth of it, fel feeling it in your heart, right? Very, very different. Too many of us hear something and then think we know it. You don't know it when you hear it. It's, it's just words that have been translated through language into a certain thought pattern in your brain and you think it. That's all. It's got nothing to do with anything else. There's no, there's no feeling involved in it at that point. To, to actually know the truth, you have to feel it. Right? And, and if we arrogantly believe in our head that we already know everything about love we need to know, while at the same time our life is demonstrating that is not true, then we're foolish. To me, that's the definition of crazy. Believing that... that you already know or you have already been perfected in something when your life is already telling you that that's not the truth is crazy, isn't it? Isn't it believing a fictitious thing? Isn't that the definition of being crazy? <laughs> believing something that's not true or not real? Uh, so this is why, you know, I get called crazy a lot, but honestly, what I see is the majority of people, uh, my, my, my razor has disappeared, there it is, the majority of people are much more crazy than I am because they believe a whole thing, heap of things that are not true just about themselves. Okay, so arrogance, big problem. The second, second issue is that we talked about the difference between the height of God's love, like is it the higher source, and our source of what we've learned around about us. So we've got the two differences in sources of where, where we've learned love. Now, my, all of us 
have learnt love from this lower source, right? So, so what what do we go? What are we going to have to do if we're going to need to if we're going to learn love from this higher source? What what are we going to have to do with this lower source? Throw it out, right? So, so we're going to have to let go of our own, and remember. Our own is not just our personal own, <laughs> but it's also, unfortunately, what the collective, pe what you call the collective consciousness sometimes, or everybody on earth already believe love to be. So it's not, that's the problem, is it's not just letting go of your own concept, it's, it's actually by letting go of your own concept, you're confronting everybody else's concept as well, which is a very difficult process, our own definition of love. Now, of course, that requires humility, does it not? So, so essential quality development of humility. So, now, I aren't even, even asking you how you feel about love yet. I'm just saying what needs to happen if we're ever going to even think about how we feel about love. This is going to have to start to occur. We're going to have to let go of arrogance. We're going to have to start saying that, hey, we probably don't know very much about love at all, given the fact that what God does is not what humans do, and what, God, what humans want God to do is not what God does. We, we have to come to accept that maybe what God does is perfected in love, and maybe what we're doing, which we think is perfect, is not perfect at all. We have to let go of the concept that we already know. And I see that as a major problem. For, for the majority of people who've listened to our presentations for five or ten years even, it's still a major problem for many of you. Letting go of this concept of what you believe love to be and how in line you are with God's love already is a major problem. It, like Every time I raise these issues in, a personal, in just personal discussions, most of the time it ends up in argumentation. And that tells me, well, if you want to argue with the fact that the way that you believe love to be, which, by the way, the results of are what we can see in the world currently today, if you want to argue that that's actually perfection, then we haven't even got a basis to begin our education. Because in my mind, it's definitely not perfection. And if you examine what's going on in the world, surely you don't think it's perfection either. So why hold on to it? All right. So it's a very important thing to, to ask ourselves. The next one is even more important, I feel. Am I prepared to feel the emotions of my lack of love? So am I prepared to feel these emotions that I have that cause my lack of love? This is where I see we have an even larger problem. The majority of us don't want to feel any negative emotion whatsoever. We don't want to feel any painful emotion. We are adverse, and, and not only adverse, we will enter wars to not feel a painful emotion. That's how bad this is. We will enter arguments on a one-on-one -on -one basis, fights, and eventually, on a national basis, wars in order to prevent the feeling of some emotions. That's how dedicated we are to avoiding emotion. <laughs> right? And I see this dedication in the majority of people, this dedication to avoiding their true emotional condition and just feeling it without acting upon it. Everyone wants to act upon it. Right? So they feel angry, what do they want to do? They, they, they want to go out and do something with that anger. So that, that's how riots occur in football stadiums. They, they can't just sit there and feel their frustration about two goalless teams fighting each other for 90 minutes. right? What they've got to do instead is express this frustration about every missed opportunity, missed, which is all about, in the end, their own life and their own missed opportunities and all this own, their own stuff that's inside of themselves. And the game is a great attractive event to expose these particular emotions. But, but when these emotions are exposed, what do they do? They don't just sit there and feel them. <laughs> they act upon them. And, and they'll act upon them so much that they'll kill somebody. 
or harm somebody or burn places down. And people that so easily get caught up in this emotionally because they're avoiding the feeling of their own emotion. Unless you're prepared to feel your own emotional lack of love, you will never be able to absorb the new emotional feelings of, of love. There is a, the way the soul operates is, is based on this principle of preclusion. If inside of you there are feelings that cause you to believe in a lack of love and you do not let those feelings go, then you will never accept feelings that cause you to believe in love. So this, it becomes essential then for you to understand the emotions that exist inside of you that actually cause you to believe in a lack of love, you know, in lack of love. It's essential for you to work through those particular things emotionally. What I notice many of you doing is intellectually reasoning with your mind, convincing yourself eventually that you've dealt with it, when in your heart, or what I would term your soul, your feeling state, you haven't let go of it at all. And then you want to tell me, arrogantly, <laughs> that you have, when it's quite obvious in your life that that's not true. Right? So we want to make sure that we are prepared. One of the things we need to do is be prepared to feel the emotions of a lack of love. What's the next thing we need to do? We need to start to absorb... God's definition. It's not, it's not good enough to just to let go of the negative definition. What do you end up with? No definition. <laughs> no definition at all. And, and, and that is often a very, uh, what I would call, amoral place to be. In other words, in that place where you've let go of the world's definition, you end up with a definition that has no rights, no wrongs. And in fact, you start telling yourself that even, that there is no such thing as right and wrong. There's no such thing as good and bad. And I've heard New Age philosophers go on with, like, with those kind of discussions for years and years and centuries even, coming up with this concept that actually there's no right and wrong, there's no good and bad, we're just, we're just here to you know, learn about ourselves and whatever they think, and then, then they go and engage a whole lot of behaviour that's out of harmony with love from that belief system. The Epicurean lifestyle, the Epicurean lifestyle meaning um, this, this concept, let's eat, drink and be merry for tomorrow we are to die. How alive is that? The majority of people in the world practice that, don't they? It doesn't matter what religious faith they are, that's really their religion. Right? And none of that is accepting God's definition of love. Right? So we need, we need to change that. And the fifth thing uh, that we're going to have is, uh, am I going to develop a desire to follow God's definition of love. <laughs> it's, one, it's one thing to learn it. It's one thing to intellectually be able to reparate it back to somebody and say, this is how it is. But it's quite another thing to actually develop a heartfelt desire that you actually put that into practice, isn't it? How do you find that yourselves? Like, you have all this theory now, but... How, how much of it is it impacting on you, upon your life? Can you see that many times there's emotions inside of you lacking, which are a lack of love, really still driving your behaviour, right? So, 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 you know, developing a desire to actually, to actually follow this God's definition of love is going to require removal of the emotions that actually define the lack of love that's inside and a replacement of some emotions inside of you that cause you to live in harmony with love all the time. Right? So it's automatic that you're in harmony with love. So it's going to require some things of us. 
When we examine this question, how I feel about love, we're going to see that these things are also going to be required of us. The question I have for you is that you're the most important person in your progress, right? Aside from the source of <coughs> all love, you are the only person that can stop or allow the flow of love from that being into you and the flow of truth from that being into you and the flow of desire for action from that being into you only you have control of that so you are the person responsible for answering these questions you're personally responsible nothing any helper can do can help you resolve internally these things you need to do it for yourself so my question to you is are you prepared to do that and, and are you going to put some sort of effort into it? Or, or are you just going to go, oh, I'll just wait for the next presentation. You know, oh, another five years has gone past. But, um, we'll, be, we'll be right. Eventually we'll get there. We have to be relaxed about this process. There's a lot of things you can do to convince yourself to avoid taking personal responsibility many of you when I first met you wanted the Jesus of the Bible do you know what I mean by that you wanted the Jesus of the Bible to come to you save you from your own sins rub out all of the past things that have happened in your life that have been terrible that you don't want to feel about so you don't have to feel about any of those things you want him to get rid of all of the wicked people on the planet so that you don't have to put up with any of those wicked people. Of course, you're not one of them. Right. And, and, and you wanted him to do all of those things for you, recognising how sincere and desirous you really are of being loving. Right. And that's the kind of Jesus you want. And that Jesus doesn't exist. Yeah. It's also the type of God you want. And that God doesn't exist either. God's trying to teach you. God gave you this gift of free will, which, we're, which is our main theme of what we're talking about this week. God gave you the gift because God wants you to be personally responsible. You're personally responsible for how you feel about love. It, it doesn't matter how many excuses you use or what's happened to you in the past. It doesn't matter what people have done to you in the past. At the end of the day, you've got feelings inside of you that define how you feel about love. Unless you choose to release those feelings by choice, by your own desire, nothing is going to change. And it doesn't matter how much somebody else damaged you, it doesn't matter how much your parents have harmed you, it doesn't matter how much when you were growing up at school they harmed you and so forth. All of those things are terrible, but it doesn't matter how much those things have happened. What matters now is are you willing to actually deal with it? That's all that matters now. Right? That's the thing you have control over. You didn't have control over what happened to you as a child. You didn't have control over what happened to you at school most of the time. You didn't ha have a control over what happened to you in the home most of the time. You didn't have control of what happened when you were in the womb even. But you do have now a developed adult sense of will. You do have your life now. You now have control, whether you believe you do or not. And God's trying to help you become a self-responsible adult child of God. Right? And what that means is that you take full responsibility for every action you have, every emotion inside of you, and you desire, develop a desire to work through how you feel about love and release anything that's out of harmony with God's definition of love. That's what it's going to require. Ruth, thanks. Can't pronounce Ruth's name properly, so I won't even try. <coughs> A big thing for me in that process is how to differentiate between feeling um, my emotional pain mm -hmm. and absorbing error. So, because sometimes I feel like I'm feeling my emotional pain and trying to connect with the cause of that pain, mm -hmm. but that emotion does not go away every day for weeks. And then I get... Um, there's a, a raising of a fear of being stuck in that I'm in, in that emotion. Yes. And so my question is, 
How do you know? Uh, yeah, I get so confused sometimes mm -hmm. if it's uh, my emotional pain mm -hmm. or am I uh, channeling uh, somebody else's weird? pain or yeah. whatever. The, the way you know is already how you've told me, and that is you've done it for, for many weeks and no changes have occurred. That's how you know. So you know something's wrong. Right. As soon as, as soon as you, if, if you're, if you're working through releasing your emotional error and you're believing you're releasing your emotional error, but there is no change occurring in your life, there's no attractions that are changing in your life, because remember the attraction change instantly. If none of that is occurring, that it's telling you you're on the wrong track with regard to that emotion. And, and it's most probably an emotion of self-deception. Does that make sense? Because, because uh, emotions of self-deception cause you to stay in these cycles for long periods of time. Emotions that are real have instant change, right? And some of you will need to feel them for a week or two weeks or three weeks or even a few months. And some of you have enough fear in you to be feeling fear for a year. But, but if you don't notice changes occurring over that period of time, then something's wrong. So if there is a self-deceiving emotion, yep. should I try to ignore or try to connect with that to feel the underlying cause we'll talk about that in your Q in the q a shall we okay yeah sure. as to what how to address those particular issues yeah thank you let's first go through how we actually feel about love and then and then we might be able to identify some of the areas that we need to work on first emotionally if we're going to change because because uh, i feel we can get really stuck in some very basic uh feelings that have really very little impact upon our development of our relationship with God and receiving an education from God, right? And then we can get so embroiled in those particular emotions that we completely avoid um, receiving anything from God in the process. And so we've got to be caref careful of doing that. The way we do that is by being honest about how we really feel. So, so the first questions I'd like to ask you guys are, how do you feel... How do you really feel about God? You tell me how you really feel about God. Um, so we go straight behind you, Kel. Yep, thanks. Okay. Uh, he wouldn't be interested in myself, in me. Okay, so God's disinterested in me. Like, like I'm too small for God or I'm too little for God or all those kind of feelings. I'm going to take off my shoes because sooner or later I'm going to trip over them. <laughs> so, so in other words, you don't worth enough for God, really, isn't it? So how do you feel about God? But that's not how you feel about God. Isn't that how you feel about you? True. In relationship to God? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I think that's a different question, isn't it? How do I feel about me <laughs> is a separate question to how I feel about God. The trouble is we often get the two mixed up, right? I'm asking you here, how do you feel about God? What, what kind of character, what kind of nature, what do you believe about God? What are the things you feel about God inside of you if you're really honest about it? Right? So if we come down to Diana down the front here and then we'll go next to William and across to Dawn and then, and then we'll go straight back to Deidre. Oh, I can feel that God feels... God expects too much from me. Right, so he, he dem he's dem demanding. Yeah, demanding. Demanding, yep. yep. <laughs> I, feel, I feel that God's arrogant because God won't listen to me. Okay, so God won't listen. So what, what would you, what's the opposite of not listening? Oh, I suppose arrogance could be considered, but... <laughs> Deaf, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just put that up, shall we? <laughs> God's deaf. <laughs> Is that how you spell it? I think so. And, and, um, and, and a lot of us also feel that God's <laughs> dumb as well. It doesn't speak to me, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. God's as, as uh, dem demanding. Right. <clears throat> Go on. Uh, God makes it too hard and I, f I feel I want to throw a tantrum, but I realise that's the me. Yep, so uh, what, what's the feeling about God, though, in that? Because in that? there is a feeling about God oh, in that. Yeah, it's just um, why weren't we given uh, a rule book? Right, so God's made everything hard, 
Yes. Like, not easy. Yes. Isn't that how we feel? Yes. Everything's really hard with God, like, ugh. Yep, too yeah. many rules. And isn't that and frustrating? Why didn't get a rule book? Like, don't we feel frustrated about that, most of us? Yep. But like, if you're honest with ourselves, most of us feel pretty angry with God, right? Mm. I because feel like we, I want to throw a tantrum. Yeah, you feel like you've got a punch <laughs> in the nose. How, making out my life so hard. But then that won't help either. No, because God's That's all powerful. He'd just punch me back if he wanted to. And <laughs> that, that, would be that won't help either. So it's just think, a waste oh, of time. It's useless doing that. So what do we do instead? We sit there in in a in a apathy, you know, go, oh, it's pointless punching out God, so I might as well yeah. just lay on the ground and be mope, mope around and complain yeah. about God instead. So I go into the sad sacky. Yeah. And then I... Which, which you could really classify as like self... Punishment, and I realise that's a waste uh, of time Is it self-punishment well. or is it... I call it sad sacky. Yeah, it's it's like it's like a tantrum without without the yelling and screaming, isn't it? Yeah, it, it, it's an apathetic tantrum, really, mm. isn't it? Yeah. And Did then you? when I get to the crunch of it, yep, I can feel the pure. You can feel uh, the pure, the pure. Um, uh, oh, I don't believe you can at this stage, Dawn. So can we give this okay. move to the, the reason why I don't believe it? Because we're yet to process through these emotions we actually feel about God. They they'll keep coming up until you process through them. All right, DJ. Hi, I feel God's an evil monster. Yep, yep. Most, uh, in fact, in fact, uh, I've met many people and, and and many religious people, in fact, as well, that be, that believe God's really evil, an evil despot. Yep. Really, yep, yep. I I feel God's a liar. God's a liar. <laughs> well, that's going to be hard, considering God's also dumb. <laughs> Um, I, I don't know how that happens, but if we just move across. <laughs> um, cruel. Cruel, yes, that's a very common one, isn't it? Cruel, yep. Distant. Distant, yep. I feel he's a elitist. Elitist, yes. You have to be real special before God will like you. <laughs> yep. Okay, if we just go straight back to... Uh, oh, it's Karina. Did you have your hand up? Yeah, then go across to Alan. And on this side, if we can bring the mic down to... Um, to Angela. Sorry, Angela. Um, I have to be a good girl for God. That's so what's that? Only... What's that about God, though? That's how you have to be. But what's that tell you about God? Well, it's discriminating. God only loves me when I'm perfect. Yes. Isn't that a big one for many of us? I have to be perfect, otherwise God won't love me. Yes. Right? That's a big one for many, isn't it? So God demands perfection. Before God loves me. Yep. And because Hello. and because of that, I find God frightening. Yes. Scary. You know? Most people are terrified of God. And to put it into like, if they consider a concept of a being that's all powerful, for the majority of people on earth, that means you've got a cruel person who's all powerful. That's a scary proposition, isn't it? It's like making Hitler all powerful. Right? And that's how most people see God, really. Right? And this is also one of the reasons why a lot of uh, atheists don't believe in God at all, because they go, well, that's not possible, so, that, so God doesn't exist at all then, right, to them. And it's just human choice that causes all these things. Yep, if we, Angela? Uh, I feel that God, that I'm pretty angry at God for being a hypocrite. So you reckon God's a hypocrite? Yeah. Yep. Hypocrite meaning says one thing, does another? Yeah. Pretty hard, considering God's dumb, but anyway. We'll, uh, I don't necessarily think God's dumb. Though. <laughs> dumb in the sense cannot speak. And, uh, and it's pretty hard to be a hypocrite when you can't speak. Um, Pamela? Um, I feel that God is conniving, the way you set up this system. Ah, yes, we get so. wounded and then we have to turn to him. So it goes along, ev to along the evil and cruel line there, yeah, doesn't okay. it? Yeah. If we go straight back behind this might be evil and cruel as well, but I feel like God's really vindictive. Yep, yep. Mm. Resentful. Mm, wants to make it hard. And wants painful. to make it hard. Yeah, my life's pretty easy without God, but put God in my life and makes it <laughs> a lot more difficult. <laughs> That's how most of us feel, right? Yeah. Um, I feel God's a sadist and because I'm bad, he's given me no hope. Yeah, sadist is a good word. Um, that's how many people believe God to be. Yeah, Bruce, behind. Um, God's untrustworthy. Untrustworthy, yeah. Anyway, we could keep going, couldn't we? 
The question I have for you is, are you willing to feel through those emotions? Because, you see, many of you, when we talk about those emotions, you can recognise the feeling inside of you, right? Yeah, I, I have that one. I have that one. I have that one. And yet we're not willing to feel it. For whatever reason, we judge it or we deny it or we try to make out it's not like that at all inside of us or whatever. But, but whatever the reason, we choose to not feel these particular feelings about God. Now, now, how can you receive something from a source of all truth and a source of all love if you have these particular feelings about that source? Those particular feelings have to dissipate somehow, do they not? And the only way a feeling can dissipate is by you feeling it, being honest about the feeling of it, right? Now, many of these things, interestingly, many of these feelings about God that you have actually more relate to your parents than to God. And you refuse to acknowledge that. All right? The majority of us refuse to acknowledge that we have similar feelings about our upbringing as we do about God. And so there is a direct relationship between your feelings about God and your feelings about your mum and dad. Right? And yet the majority of us go, no, mum and dad weren't like that. No, mum and dad weren't like that. We want to fight about whether mum and dad were like that. But the reality is, if you go back over your life in, and particularly into your childhood, you see that actually a lot of times your parents were like that. And this is one of the reasons why you have such a bad opinion of God. Now, while you maintain this opinion of God inside of your heart, inside of your soul, do you think it's going to be possible to receive from the source the very being that you have these feelings about? You're going to have to work through these feelings, are you not? And what's that going to require of you? It's going to require feelings and pretty hard emotions. Emotions that were put there by your interaction with your parent. Your parents, in fact. Right? That's going to mean working your way through some of these emotions. That's why we've talked to you about emotions so many times. Because they impede your relationship with the parent that doesn't have any of these problems. <laughs> but which we feel has these problems. Right? And this requires a very sincere, non-judgmental view on your part to work your way through these particular emotions. Now, what a lot of people do is they separate themselves. Something that you raised really, Dawn, is that they end up separating themselves and they end up getting to what they classify as their pure state, you know, their state inside themselves where they don't feel that. And then they hang on to that. But all you're doing there is fooling yourself that you've addressed these particular emotional injuries. And that's no good for you. Because it, it's, it's entering a state, a quasi state of, it's really a state of unreality. Believing yourself at this pure state to have resolved everything when those particular things are not resolved. It's far better to resolve these things. And the only way you're going to resolve these particular things is by going back and reflecting upon and feeling the emotions of your involvement or relationships with your family-based source, your parents, in other words. That's the only way you're going to process your way through these particular emotions. Does that make sense? So if we go to our window across... <coughs> Part of the assistance group in Texas made me realise that actually my childhood and probably all of our childhoods were actually like in Guantanamo Bay, which is an interesting reflection of what's happened. But, you know, we were trapped, we were... All this sort of stuff happened to us. Yes. Like we were in this prison that we couldn't escape or, yes. you know, do anything about. Yes. Mm. And in, in saying that, we're not being hard on your parents because that's the average parent. The average parent is like that, unfortunately, on this planet. That's why our definition of love is so distorted, because we actually believe what they did was loving. Right? But, but when we examine it truthfully, we can see that it's basically the actions of some quite abusive people who didn't even know they were being abusive and who actually had been taught to be abusive by their generation of parents for the same reasons. 
And they came to believe that that was loving for many of them. And, we, and so we get this multi-generational sin being passed down from parent to child, parent from they become parent to child, their child, they become a parent to their child and so forth. Grandfather, great-grandfather, right the way back, it's all there. And yet, and yet what do we do with it? Instead of processing through it, we go, oh, gee, it's all God. That's, God is like that. The reality is, very few of you, if any, have had an interaction with God where God has been like this at all, ever. And yet, so where did you get this concept of God from? It has to have come from somewhere. The key now, doesn't matter really where it come from, does it? The key now is it's got to be released from you in order to obtain a relationship. And that's going to require one particular quality which we're going to talk about in a few days' time. And that's the quality of faith. Faith that God is not like that. Right? You would rather at this stage believe God is like that in your heart than accept that your parents were like that. That's a very important thing I just said. You would rather believe that God's like that rather than believe the actual people who did those things to you are like that. That's what you'd rather. So that tells you your investment in maintaining the world's position of love is quite strong. right? It's a very important thing to come to terms with that. Now, Alan, you had a... This is um, really interesting what, what you're saying. Uh, recently, um, I come to the, a bit of truth that um, when I was a child, I emotionally disowned my parents. Yep. And it, most of us have done. Yeah, and but it's like it's taken five years of listening to your teaching to to actually believe that that is a truth inside my soul. Mm -hmm. um, and then, as a young adult, and only till I recently met you, I studied the mystical teachings of what God was and. And what the earth had to offer about you and God. And so I looked at all these different texts and, and lived in spiritual healing centres and studied gurus and all, all those things. Mm -hmm. And now I've got a warped view of what God is as those two things. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. And I've... I've so you've, you've constructed almost... And mm -hmm. a lot of people do this. They construct a big facade of God. Yes. Even... And because, because the reality of what they really feel about God is this, and they don't want to feel about yeah, that, that's it. because that involves feeling about their family of origin, yep. and they don't want to feel about that. And so what they do is they construct a great big facade, and the New Age community is great at this, constructing a huge facade to help them avoid a whole heap of quite hard emotional processing work. Yeah. So I hid in the mystical teachings of God. Yes. And now I don't know who Alan is. And that, well, you, in, you in a lose way, a sense of self. You yeah. lose a sense of your own will. You lose a sense of what your, you know, what your reality is, even under those circumstances. Because what you're, do, what you're doing, and, and this is a common problem, what you're doing is you're constructing an unreal concept of the world around you and an unreal concept of the source of that universe around you. And then you're calling that source your construction truth yep. and then you live in harmony with that particular truth yep. which people then call my truth right yeah yep. and none of it is true at all and of course none of it creates any happiness i feel i've got two building sites going on yep <laughs> one is the de the deconstruction of my facade building site yeah and the other deconstruction of what i perceive god, god to be to be yes and, and it's I been it's it's been quite painful uh, it, but it will be it's the start of something i guess it's a very important process but can i say to you alan it's more important to deconstruct your concepts of god at this point than it is to deconstruct your concepts of yourself I think that's where I'm going belly up. 
Yeah, most, most people are focused on themselves first yeah. and then they think about deconstructing the concepts of God afterwards. But I'm suggesting you deconstruct your concept of God first, then God will help you deconstruct the concept of yourself afterwards. Do you understand? Yeah. And, and, and if you do it that way around, you will have a lot, you, you'll go through the process a lot faster than you were capable of doing by trying to deconstruct yourself first, deconstruct your facade self first. Do you follow? Yeah. Yeah. Thank and, you. and this is where, like, to me, the most important thing is, remember, God's the source. If you can connect to God first, that becomes your first pri priority. If you can do that first, then deconstructing all of the other things that you need to deconstruct will have God's assistance in the process. But if, if you don't deconstruct yourself first... Like if you try to deconstruct yourself first and, and not deconstruct any of your feelings about God uh, at this stage, then what happens is you're on your own. You're on your own. How, how do you determine what is real, what is not, how, what is true, what isn't? How do you, you don't have somebody telling you because you can't have somebody telling you because you haven't deconstructed your barriers to that person telling you. You follow? So it's so important to deconstruct first these concepts of feelings that you have about God. Just keep an eye on my time. Yep, still got a few minutes to go. Um, if we go up, we go back to Gary. So, AJ, like, if we, the demanding, evil, cruel, distant, that the, they're our emotions, you know, that the, they're our anger emotions with God that need to be... No, they're felt. not. They're your anger emotions with your parents that you refuse to accept. So I was just trying to work out the how to... You, you, can't, you, can't, you can't work through these with God because God's never done this to you. Okay. <laughs> the persons who did this to you were your parents and your upbringing and your school your teachers and so forth. They did this to you. you. You're going to have to work through those emotions with them about that because those emotions are imposing their opinions upon this concept of God. Do you follow? Yeah. It's, it's not like God's done any of those things to you. Yeah. It's just that you believe God has because your parents of family of origin has. Mm. Right? And this is why I keep saying to you, like, you can believe all that about God as much as you want, but at the end of the day, if you start trying to process that, you'll find there's no emotion there because none of it belongs to your relationship with God. It all belongs to your relationship with your family of origin. So, so the key is to actually transfer that to, to your family and then deconstruct those yes. issues that, you, that you've... That you've put on to God. It's interesting though, Gary, if I ask you how you feel about your mum and dad, you probably wouldn't have made that list. Right. True. Right, and that shows you the self-delusion that you're under. Right? You're willing to impose it upon God who's, to you, indiscriminate and out there. You don't really you don't have to identify him as a being or a person. You, 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 there's some kind of abstract concept. So you're willing to impose all of those emotions upon that abstract concept, mm. but you're not willing to impose, upon, impose them upon the people that actually created them. Yeah. Right? And there's our denial. Mm. Right? There's our desire to avoid that particular connection. I'm, what I'm saying to you, while you impose these belief systems upon God, and these are feelings that you do certainly have to feel and process your way through, but they're not with God. Mm. <laughs> they're with people that you have then imposed upon another authority figure that you believe God to be. Right? And this is where we get all mixed up, right? We start thinking we've got to feel these things about God. You go down the track of trying to feel all that about God and the reality is you'll get so spirit influenced that you won't know where you are in a month's time. And the reason why is because you don't actually have those feelings about God. They're all about somebody else that you've imposed on God. Does everyone get that? It's a very important fact. Yep. So we come down to me and, then, and we come across to the corner here. Sorry, Lauren. Is it enough to know that this is about these emotions are actually about our own parents to actually de-block the, the kind of pathway between God and myself? Or do I have to have resolved emotionally all the feelings with my parents in order to not you know, still project this? Uh, well, well both things are sort of true because obviously as soon as you realize that actually all these emotions that you feel are not specifically with God, then of course you can start having some faith that God is different 
And that faith will certainly help you develop the relationship with God so that you can get God's help to, de to deconstruct the other building, <laughs> the facade of yourself, right? So, so certainly it can help. But while those emotions exist in you, you're going to find that process hard. So it's very, very important to release these emotions from you but to release them, you're going to have to actually see the truth of how they got there, which is related to the, being, the people who created them within you. Right? So both are true. Both things are true. Having the awareness helps, but it's not the solution. The solution is working through these feelings that you have about your family of origin that then have caused you to impose these feelings upon a person that you are yet to actually have a relationship with. Each time I process, I seem I have to each time go through that realization again that it's not with God, it's actually my parents. And it's like it has to happen. Which again means again. that it's not solved, right? Yeah. yeah there, once you understand this really emotionally, you go, ah, this is all about my mum and dad all the time. It's all about, well, it might not just be mum and dad, it might be grandparents, it might be school teachers, it might be whoever were a part of that formative years of your life that caused that particular emotion. You follow? Now, I've just got to keep an eye on my time because there's another number of, a num number of other things I'd like to... Um, I'm just checking my time against my clock here. Okay, um, I've only got a few more minutes, so probably what I'd like to do is, is move on to the next question. Right? So that was how I feel about God. And you can see here how I feel about God is really a lot about how I feel about my parents, really not God, right? All right, so the next question becomes, how do I feel about God's love? What, what do you believe God's love to be like? All right, if we go to Vera, this is Mike, just behind you, other side. Um, it's unattainable and I have to earn it. You have to earn it, right? So, so it's, not, it's not given as a gift. It, it, so it's not a gift. I have to earn, earn it. Uh, if we go straight behind Lily. Um, it's going to be so intense that it'll just drown me and consume me. So, yeah, it'll, uh, so basically it's going to, um, you, you're not going to know yourself afterwards. It's like you don't have your own life afterwards. You're going to just do whatever God wants afterwards. Yeah, totally controlling. Totally controlling. If you go next to you, to page I feel that God's love is fickle fickle yeah good word yep changes all the time yep if we go back straight back it's Jane AJ I feel it's conditional because of all God's laws that for instance prevent me from feeling his love until I've dealt with my addictions etc. Yep, conditional, good 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 word. Yep. Okay. Uh, it's going to involve pain and suffering. It's going to be painful, yep. Mm. Interesting. But very true if we come across to the side we just pass the mic through there. Yep. Restrictive. Sorry? Uh, Restrictive. Restrictive, yes. Very good. If you just pass it across. R-E-S-T. Restrictive. Restrictive, sorry about that. I feel it's um, absent, selective and dangerously temperamental. <laughs> yeah, all good words, yeah. So absent. Selective. Temperamental, temperamental, uh, is it temperamental? I don't know. Yep. Anyway, we could continue, but what do you see as a pattern? Ah, interesting, isn't it? When you analyse how you feel about God, pattern is here we go. All of these feelings that we have about God's love, who do they happen to be about? Ah, happened to be about how we were brought up to define love, right? Sometimes we were given and sometimes not. Sometimes it was controlling, sometimes it wasn't. Sometimes it was restrictive, sometimes it's not. Very fickle, sometimes they loved me, next day they didn't. Huh. 
Sometimes it's withdrawn and you have no reason why, understanding of why. Right? It could have been just something bad happening in their life, but it's gone. Now. Right? So what does this tell me? It tells me if I'm going to deal about my feelings about God's love, which, which I've said right in our previous discussion is a key part of my receiving from the source, right? If I'm going to feel about these things, I'm going to have to feel about where that actually comes from and it's not God. It again is from the family, the, the upbringing that we had, the family of origin in particular. Right, the unwillingness. It's it, what I find so interesting, and this is something I probably need to say and emphasise again. I find this so interesting when I ask people about how they feel about God. They're very honest about their feelings, generally, and they come up with all of those very, very similar feelings. And in fact, it's very rare for people to say anything nice <laughs> about God. Because that's not our general experience. That, that's, that's, we don't feel this way because our general childhood experience is that we don't feel that way about love or a person in authority. Right? And yet we haven't considered, you know, if, if I had asked you, how do you feel about your mum? You probably would not have said the same things. And if I asked you how you said, how feel about your dad, you probably wouldn't have said the same things. Now I find it very interesting on a, number, on a number of levels. Firstly, God hasn't done the bad things to you that your mum and dad have done. And yet you're willing to blame God for a whole heap of things God hasn't done to avoid blaming the people who have actually done it. Right? Now that's a problem, isn't it? Right. How would you feel <laughs> if you were God getting blamed for a whole heap of things you've never done? And in fact, not only never done, but completely disagree with, and in fact, not only completely disagree with, but all of your laws have been attempting to correct from your parents for all their, their life, and yet they're just stubborn, stubborn people who are arrogant and just don't want to accept that, just like I've been probably, or you've been, right, as a parent. And, and what do we do? We instead... Put all this on God rather than actually feeling it about our parents. Now, I suggest to you, if you want to try to feel all that about God, you, you, you will not progress at all. Because the reality is God never did any of those things to you. God's love's not like that. And God's never demonstrated this behaviour to you. And if you try to feel about that, what you're going to find is a, is a, is a pointless feeling process that will never result in any resolution. Because it's not really the problem. Right? I do agree that you do feel that way about God. I do agree. But the reason why is because you've imposed the feelings upon God because it's easier to do that than it is to feel about these particular things with regard to the people that are still in your life. Right? And whether they've died or not, they're still in your life. They're probably sitting on your shoulder right now. If they, they, you know what I mean? So, so this is the problem that we face. The problem we face is we're imposing the very being, uh, see, in the, uh, remember our previous discussion, the very being who can assist me to learn about all truth and, 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 and grow in love and to get an education. And not only an education in love, by the way, I'm talking about a universal education. But the very being that can help me do that, what, what do I feel? I feel is exactly the same as my mum and dad. And yet, I'm not willing to actually say that to my mum and dad. Because why? Because then, as the saying goes, the shit will hit the fan, right? In the, re in the relationship with my mum and dad. And we don't want that to happen, right? We don't want to be perceived as a bad child or a bad person or bad person by society or whatever it is that causes us to deny all of these emotions and instead what we'd rather do is grab all of that emotional bundle never release it in other words keep it inside of ourselves and impose it all upon a being that we can have an abstract concept of so that we can blame that being so that we don't have to deal with anything and you know the biggest problem with that is 
I'm not connected to the source now. I have no ability to grow beyond my current condition now. Right? Because remember from our previous discussion, uh, our ability to grow beyond our current condition involves receiving love from a higher source. And, I, and while I'm imposing all of this upon the higher source, I'm not, I'm not receiving anything. So I'm stuffed. Really. And that's why many of you are stuffed. And what I mean by that is many of you have not engaged the process of, of working through your, your desire to impose all of these emotions upon God rather than work through these emotions with your family of origin. You follow? And as a result, how you feel about love, highly distorted. It is the definition of your family of origin that you have retained. And as a result of that, you now are no longer able to actually receive information about love or information about anything, for that matter, of a universal nature from the source of that universe because you're in complete rejection of that source. Complete rejection. You want to reject them because if rejecting them means that you can still somehow have a relationship with the very people that have harmed you. Now I suggest to you that the only way you're going to get a relationship with the very people who have harmed you and your family of origin is to work through every single issue and then when you're done doing that and then they do the same thing, then you'll have a relationship. Now that might take you a thousand years. And if you're going to wait a thousand years before you have a different opinion of God, then, then I would suggest to you it's going to be a thousand years before you get any education in love. You can see the problem? It's pretty big, isn't it? Yeah. So the imperative becomes me allowing myself to see how I feel about God, God's love, God's truth, God's laws, God's everything and be honest with myself and write it all down and then have that amazing light bulb moment that says, ah, oh, this is how I feel about my family of origin. And all I'm doing is imposing all of that on God and all that does is stop me from having a relationship with the very being that can educate me in love because that very being is higher as a source in love than all of these other things around me. I'm stopping my own education by putting this emotional crap and baggage onto the very being who can help me grow in love. The very being who can educate me. Isn't it interesting what we do? Just to avoid the truth. Just to avoid the truth. Yep. Elvira? Now, Elvira, it's going to have to be a very short question because I'm meant to be right. finished already. So, so what you're saying is if we have a heart-based heart understanding that these aren't the emotions to do with God, mm -hmm. then we can begin the connection even though we haven't worked through everything. Yep. We can, because we're now not blaming God, even intellectually blaming God anymore for f us feeling this way. And we now know, oh, I think God's deaf. Well, actually, yeah, actually, that's how my parents treat me a lot, eh? If you think about it, isn't it? How many times have your parents treated you that way, like, like they're deaf to what you said? Quite a lot, right? That's why you believe this, right? And if you, put, if you allow yourself to see a lot of these emotions and then put it back and, and, and what will happen inside of you is f you'll remember things about your life where, wow, that's when they did that and that's why I have that feeling. And you will allow the memory of and then the processing of the emotion of that particular event. You follow? Yes, yeah, because so I, I, I feel like with all these things like I haven't worked to the bottom of anything but I feel like I've had little glimpses I agree most people have right 
Most people have glimpses of this, but you, you still don't understand what you're mostly doing. You're imposing these emotions from the family of origin onto God and onto God's love and onto God's laws and onto God's truth or anything belonging to God. You've imposed all of these emotions from your family of origin onto it and then as a result you've blocked your own self from having the relationship with the very person who can educate you. Right? Now, now it's one thing to know that it's one thing now to realise that you've done that. Now need to take some action to undo that. Now, of course, just realising it helps, doesn't it? Because you can go, right, okay. Every time I'm asked about God, I feel, oh, God's dumb, God's evil, God's cruel, God's this, God's that. And, and, and really, what am I saying? My parents have been like that. That's what I'm saying. And I just don't want to feel about that. And instead, I'd prefer to impose it upon God. Sad, but true. Yeah. So what I'd like you to encourage you to do here, remember this is all about your responsibility here. I would like you to ask yourself these questions, and some of them have been put in your outline. How do I feel about God? How do I feel about God's love? How do I feel about God's truth? How do I feel about God's laws? How do I feel about God's universe? How do I feel about God's anything that you can imagine? Write down all of your answers honestly and then understand with the basic understanding that actually this is how I feel, not about God, but actually about my family of origin. After you've had some realisations about that, you've got a hope of actually connecting to God, haven't you? Because you're not blaming God anymore for treating you like your family of origin treated you. Now you've got a hope of developing a relationship, a friendship, and, and also receiving some love from God if you do that. You follow? So this is a very, very important part of your aspect of de developing your will. Your will, firstly, needs to be focused on your relationship with the source of all education. Develop your will to get rid of the blockages that stop you from being able to be educated by that being. Right? Then you will get educated by that being. So what we're going to do now is have a short break again, six or seven minutes, and then we'll go into um, your, uh, some Q&A about those two things that we've covered this morning. All right?